So Ready or Not provides free on-site emergency assessments and recommendations for preparedness planning. And this includes archives, libraries, museums, tribal organizations, and history centers. This project runs from 2022 to 2025, it's three years, and it's from uh, $3.14 million of funding provided by the state of California. And it's administered by the California State Library. And we are visiting places that are large and small. So if you are just one person with a small personal archive that's just getting started as a nonprofit, we can come and see you. If you are an aspiring museum that's located in a garage for your current collection storage, that's okay too. If you're an enormous uh, UC library with special collections and archives, we would come and see you. The Ready or Not team is located in San Diego County, Sacramento, Merced, and Los Angeles. Our team has past work experience in libraries, archives, museums, historic societies, and archeology. span The team includes Mario Gallardo, Osgejan Saitustin, Victoria Wong, Caroline Weiler, Jason Partita, and myself who work on emergency preparedness consultations. And we have our outreach and travel coordinator, Celeste Knight. The project team provides assistance with disaster preparedness strategies and emergency protocols. And of course, when you get specialists on site, we also mention anything we see about storage conditions or collections care or anything else we can help with. So even if you have a disaster plan started, we can help you because this site visit goes beyond simply having a disaster plan. We look to help each organization that we visit with improvements for preservation and emergency planning. And this might take the form of training and toolkits. We send templates and resources along with our best practices recommendations. And on each site visit, the emergency preparedness consultant meets with staff and volunteers at an organization, and we assess disaster risk for your region, the site of the building, cultural heritage materials, and for the people. Our consultation encourages the organization to gather a team of people to write their disaster plan. So we're not coming in and writing your disaster plan for them, but we are encouraging you to sit down and discuss together who would take responsibility for disaster planning at your organization. The planning process itself is crucial to disaster response. So you're building the team that has the information that knows how to respond in case of a disaster. So if one of you is absent, somebody else can jump in and help. We like to think of disaster planning as resource assessment. So you're identifying who you have and what you have at your disposal to help you respond and recover. For some places that might just be a few volunteers and um, perhaps an alternate location like an adjacent building that you could move collections to if your original building had flooded. We also discuss best practices like integrated pest management, documenting water leaks and incidents, and monitoring temperature and humidity conditions and storage. So if people aren't already doing some of those risk assessment and risk mitigation practices, we try and encourage that. After the visit is complete, we provide the organization with an assessment report. Our ready or not consultants are available to answer questions and follow up about how the organization is doing with getting their disaster plan started. So what if you already have a disaster plan, but you haven't used it much or you haven't looked at it when you had a disaster and needed to respond? Well, our consultation and assessment report aim to help you determine what you need to continue disaster planning. So it's better adapted to needs that you have. So our consultation includes an interview and discussion with questions about your current practices for emergency preparedness. And we like to remind people that everyone's just gone through an emergency or a disaster. And that is, um, you know, that of having a continuity interruption of being closed during the pandemic and having to come up with a reopening plan. So we ask about past incidents, like how did staff respond to a burst pipe, a flooded basement, or a wildfire evacuation? In the second part of the visit, we walk through together and look at all cultural heritage or archive storage areas and any other areas of the buildings that you want to show to us. And if we can identify ways to kickstart your organization getting started thinking about what's missing from your disaster plan that you have, then we try to talk with you about that. And this is easiest if you guys send us a copy of what you have for disaster planning when we initially set up the visit so we can review it with you. Ready or not, consultants try to identify risks for the region or location, and this takes a FEMA-based all-hazards approach. So we might look at California and say that it's likely to have earthquake fault lines. 
or a potential landslide. In other areas, it might be likely to have floods or sinkholes. We also discuss man-made disasters like airplane or train crash, terrorism, or civil disturbances. And we talk about risk assessment for cultural heritage materials. So maybe an organization has no integrated pest management and they need some help finding guidance for how to get started on that. Some places we visit have collections at risk for physical damage because they're in overcrowded storage. And other places we visit have no issues like this at all. They have funding for beautiful exhibits and wonderful storage, and they're just facing not having enough staff. So we discuss whether the materials in the cultural heritage collections have enough of a sense of intellectual control. So is there an inventory, cataloging, and how are the materials identified? And this comes into play in a disaster when we're evacuating collections or relocating them, just knowing what you had before anything has to be moved offsite or protected. During risk assessment, our goal is to identify the threats that are most likely to occur and with the greatest impact. So each organization that has a visit from Ready or Not is provided with an emergency preparedness assessment report. The report includes key priorities to address. And if you think about this and you're concerned that this is overwhelming, these priorities are just three things to do. And it's the three key points that we come away with after the visit with you and it can be a very good way to get started. If you encountered some issues during the pandemic closures and reopening, we also offer some guidance on business continuity, and that could be documenting some of the critical functions or standard operating procedures, how to approach an unexpected closure in a systematic way, and have a strategy the next time there is a disaster. We also understand when organizations have fewer staff or less capacity or budget than after the pandemic, and we can talk about how to modify disaster plans and risk assessment when you're working with less. We also offer a list of resources in California and nationally, and we try to point organizations toward grants that might apply to some of the recommendations we offer them. And lastly, we have templates. So one template is for a long form disaster plan with a table of contents. And some of you might have this sort of plan in a binder and it hasn't been updated lately because that can be quite daunting for so much information. And we recommend updating the plan at least once a year. Other reasons for updates might be after a disaster, when staff changes, or during building renovations where floor plans or space allocations are different. So perhaps you've uh, converted some office space into storage, overflow storage, because you just kept collecting, and now your floor plans and where things are located are a little bit different than they were a year ago. Once you update the plan, being sure it's distributed in multiple locations is next. So physical copies might be kept in your home in an emergency backpack or in the office or break room or with emergency professionals. And increasingly organizations are storing this kind of information on the cloud or shared drive so it's accessible virtually. Okay, so one thing we hear from organizations that we visit that have this giant binder is that it was too much for them and they are down to just one or two staff or volunteers, and there's not enough time to go through all those sections each year and update that whole plan. And so here you see an alternative to that. And this is the pocket response plan. It can be a good portable version of the disaster plan. On the one side, you have a list of contacts from your institution, your response team, the building contractors, your landlord, your maintenance vendors, first responders for your city or county, and maybe emergency recovery services. On the other side, you have an action plan, and this includes something like a situation report, immediate response, who to communicate with, uh, how to do an assessment, the floor plan, asset priorities, and other information. And this plan is intended to fold accordion style and then fold up again and fit into your wallet or pocket. So that's why it's called that pocket response plan. A lot of people have this, but they haven't updated it since they've had staff changes. So we also discuss uh, tackling that as one of the priorities that people have already started this. And aside from updating the written disaster plan, we like to see an organization refresh their disaster supplies and reevaluate their facility and resources. So sometimes we visit a place that had a disaster recovery supply closet and they were all set up from the county or city office of emergency services or another agency. But then when the supplies were depleted or they expired, no one replaced them. 
The photo on the left shows the second floor room where disaster supplies were stored. And this included expired food and water supplies, as well as stacks of boxes in case collections needed to be packed for evacuation. And so some of these supplies are still useful and others are not. So going through and occasionally doing an inventory. The photo on the right shows the safety center that was on a site we visited. And this was where people could pick up and replenish their masks, gloves, and other supplies during the COVID pandemic. And this was replenished by the Sintos company, for example. And it was just like any other facilities management products. And we saw this at a large university library. So this was a very practical approach to a place with a lot of people. So our site visits walk through and we check with the organization on what supplies and resources they have now and what else might be useful to keep on hand. Because we don't want you to come into a disaster situation and have to run to the same uh, big hardware store that everyone is running to to get plastic sheeting or cardboard. So who can participate here in the Ready or Not project? Well, so, we have an organization with cultural materials that can participate. And if you already have some sort of emergency action plan or a written disaster plan, we can help you with that. Um, you should definitely participate if your plan doesn't include your collections because that is what we specialize in. And this is a free assessment. We know that some places have an emergency action plan and it doesn't mention anything about collections protection or response or recovery that's specific to their building. Um, so maybe you're on a campus and your library is not included in the broader plan. Um, perhaps you're part of a tribal nation and you know the archives are a very small piece of that, but they're not necessarily part of everything else that's part of an emergency plan. So you can see our map here with pinpoints for all the places that we have on our list. And we hope to reach about 600 sites in the three-year project. And we'd love to see everyone have an up-to-date written disaster plan that includes their collections. Um, on this map here, the little red triangles, uh, those caution flags are the ones that didn't have disaster plans when California State Library took the collections protection survey. And those green check marks are the ones that said they had a plan. And as we've been getting out there and visiting places for the past year, uh, what we're seeing is that even those green check marks, when we ask people, they said, you know, we have a plan, but we didn't update it. So it probably still needs a little bit of work. So thank you for joining us for this info session. This is our contact info if you're interested in scheduling a consultation. And I welcome any questions that you guys have in the chat. Um, you know, we would love to keep track of the questions. If we run out of time here, you can leave your email address with your question and I can follow up after the meeting. Um, but I do want to invite people to let us know where they're from and ask away if you're interested in visits or what this uh, project entails.